Hey, it's Josh. Welcome back. I thought I'd take a break from uh, moving gravel here to give a quick update on the John Deere 2032R. Uh, as you recall, a couple weeks ago, I did a video about uh, getting a bunch of grass wrapped around the uh, four-wheel drive drive shaft that goes into the transmission. That resulted in uh, a huge mass of uh, oil-soaked grass and um, when I cleared that all out, we had a leak, a pretty persistent leak of hydraulic fluid. So um, I also had an issue with the actuator uh, on my mid-mount mower. To be honest, I went into this repair thinking the worst. And I was expecting probably around $2,000 in repairs. Uh, I was expecting to have that actuator replaced. I've heard a lot of people saying that they've had the actuator replaced. And that's uh, the part alone is close to a thousand dollars. So I had grand visions that I was going to replace it myself. Uh, I'm glad that I did not uh, because it was not the actuator itself. Uh, what it turned out to be was actually a switch. Uh, I will leave the uh, part number here to talk a little bit about that. And um, on the drive shaft, that required. Uh, some new seals to be put in and uh, I'm going to give you some information on what all of this cost uh, all in Let me get that information on the pricing sounds like we got some more gravel showing up. Be right back I got my uh, information on the repairs. We just got some more gravel. Great guy, uh, Jeff Barron. He's based out of Logan, Ohio. I'll put his information here if you ever need any stone, uh, fill dirt or anything like that hauled and you live in the area. I know we have uh, a number of uh, Buckeye subscribers, so uh, thank you for that. So um, as I mentioned, the actuator that I thought was failing for the mid-mount mower, it ended up being a switch. The switch itself ran uh, about $208 and with uh, labor and there was some other accessory in there, I'm not sure what it was, uh, we we're at about 310 for that switch. So so for that a price, should I have done it myself? Maybe, but you know the troubleshooting was worth it to me. Uh, the good part is I didn't go pay for a whole new actuator uh, when I didn't need it. The seal uh, was $25 for the, uh, the part they had to drain the transmission and refill that, so there was cost for disposal, cost for replacing that, and the labor, uh, which they had in, in about two hours. So that came somewhere in the 310, 320 range as well. And because we're about uh, 20, 25 miles away, I think, um, from the, the Ag Pro dealership, there was a delivery and pickup uh, fee of 175 So 620 uh seven eight hundred ish dollars and then i went ahead and threw in uh, oil change while it was there because it was due for one and i just don't i'm not down here enough to spend the time doing the maintenance so um you know, normally we would do an oil change just went ahead and had them take care of it so uh not as bad as i thought but i did learn something and you know i've had this tractor it's a 2017 i've had it for five years now almost exactly five, eight, five years. And I never had that issue with the grass wrapping around uh, the drive shaft. And I couldn't figure out why now, 
what made it happen this time. And what I've concluded is I had taken off the uh, linkage assembly that holds the mid-mount mower. Because it was forced in a down position, I had gone ahead and unhooked that entire thing and set it off to the side. There's a crossbar going underneath there, and I think that crossbar would cause the grass to lay down before it ever got up to that, that area that it was caught in this time. That's my hypothesis. I did a, uh, I brush hogged about five acres the other night, and uh, the grass, a lot of the grasses were up chest high. And when I got done, there was zero grass wrapped around the drive shaft, zero grass in that area. So that's my conclusion is that that bar down there is placed in a way that just keeps anything from getting pushed up and over. All right, so what am I doing here? I've got gravel coming in. I just got another almost 10 tons of gravel. Uh, I've just got done dumping about nine down here and I had some more before that. Let me show you what we're doing here on the Barndo. And for some of you, you may not even be familiar with the Barndo. Jason's been working on the Garage Mahal and I've got the, what I call the Barndo or the Barndo Minium, uh, which is this two story uh, pole barn that has a drive through garage and what will be a two bedroom, uh, two bath cabin up top for guests, you know, thinking a long term way out for my kids and their families. And so what we're working on right now is putting in a concrete pad on both sides of the building. I'm using the gravel here to bring the grade up. And one of the key things that I've got to do is divert the water from this hillside because I have a septic tank with three runs that go all the way across that front yard and so i need all the water coming off my building all my water coming down this hill to actually not drain off to this side what we're going to do is we're going to slope this concrete towards this wall we're going to put a french drain in it that runs all the way down the wall across the yard and out past the end of my leach field so the former owners of this place did an amazing job grading it and creating uh, water flow for this. But um, I have come in, we put this wall in that goes all the way down. And uh, just this week I ran into it with the bucket as I was coming up and around mowing and knocked that uh, 73 pound stone a good ways back in. So we've got this huge wall and we added that so we could create more parking up here. Here's the barn dough. This is an Amish built pole building and uh, I love it. So you guys know Jason's having this. Uh, he's about to have a birthday on his pole barn project. He's pretty darn close, but um, these Amish guys built this building in seven days. But I've been working on parking pads. I've been working on walls. I had to get the concrete inside, which was partially done, but needed to be filled. So you can see, because of the hills, I needed to put in these retaining walls. This wall starts right here. It goes all the way down to where we just came from which was on the other side there. I had the guy out here yesterday shooting more elevations. We're gonna add some more wall here. This is all gonna be concrete here as well. And then here we go, downhill. I got a wall here. It's going to wrap around so that I've got a nice big concrete pad there. And uh, yeah, this is the barn dough. It is 28 by 42, two stories. And uh, I owe you guys some history on this and a walkthrough.
and then we've got our main cabin, our main house back over here. The new place is uh, a couple hundred square feet less. Um, but yeah, anyway. Hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Hit that like and subscribe if you enjoy our content. By the way, we also have a second channel. We're doing all kinds of reviews for Amazon. We've become Amazon influencers and we get a ton of free products. If you're into, you know, anything, I mean, we're, we're reviewing everything. It's not just tractor stuff. It's not just outdoor stuff. It's whatever gets thrown our way that we think is interesting or that we might like to have. Uh, we do a quick review on it, put it on Amazon. We have a store there and then uh, our videos are shown on the products as well. Uh, we have another channel called Hardy Brothers Product Reviews. You can follow us there. You can also follow us on Amazon, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.